Well, I went to Georgia Tech, and uh, I was interested in, I guess I was interested in the Navy because I uh, was anxious to get into the Naval ROTC at Georgia Tech. And I graduated from Tech in 1941 with a chemical engineer's degree. And uh, also I was a commissioned an ensign in the Navy in uh, June, uh, late May of 1941. Went to work for DuPont as a chemical engineer. Worked about two months and was called into the Navy at, uh, as I say, August of 1941. It was evident that the Navy was preparing for some sort of attack. Word was around that something was going to happen. I did not know, and I don't reckon anybody else really knew what was going to happen or where it was going to take place until the actual attack on uh, December 7th in Pearl Harbor. So there was the feeling, the obvious knowledge that something was taking place because Navy and all the services, Air Force, uh, Army Air Force, uh, the Army and the Marines, were recruiting people as quickly as they could, as fast as they could. Ships were being re-energized, pulled out of what they call mothballs. Many of, many of the older ships had been put in sort of storage, of mothballing this call. They were being reactivated uh, to place of submarines, destroyers, other ships as well. And so there was just the, for, I'd say, a year, a year and a half, two years before the actual attack at Pearl Harbor, there was the feeling that we were headed for some sort of war, and and a lot of folks felt that it was the Japanese that we'd be involved with. Of course, they were the ones that attack us and uh, and uh, so pushed us into the entire world war and uh, put us into the war with Germany as well as the Japanese, all the same, virtually the same time. That was the feeling, but perhaps not the knowledge. Well, I simply reported into Charleston, which is a, a place where the, almost everybody was reporting in this area. And from there, I was ordered to the USS Barry, which was based in Panama. It was a, actually a World War I uh, built uh, destroyer, but it was commissioned in about 19... 22, if I'm not mistaken, I simply reported in as an officer and was assigned various duties as would be the case. Well, uh, initially, the, uh, it was just part of a, a squadron based in Panama. We would see a good portion of the time before the war started, which began, of course, in December 7, 1941. I'd been on the Barry about four months before the war started. We were almost totally operating in the Caribbean as anti-submarine vessels. There was a great deal of uh, German submarine activity in the Caribbean, and uh, uh, very soon after December 7th, and, and uh, merchant ships were being attacked by German submarines and sunk. Uh, all over the Caribbean. It was our job to do what we could to protect the ships, which was almost nothing to begin with, since this ship had no anti-submarine underwater sound gear, didn't have any radar. All the merchant ships, of which there were numerous, coming into the canal area from the east coast and the, and the uh, Gulf Coast were headed for the canal and ultimately the Pacific, so there was a lot of traffic in commercial shipping, and it was a happy hunting ground for German submarines. And at one time, uh, I'd say in the month of February along in there, there were at least eight ships sunk within sight of the Panama Canal. And most of the work that we were doing was not really truly anti-submarine work, but was picking up survivors, and we picked up survivors to such a degree that times we had to come back into port because we were loaded with survivors who had been picked up out of the water from sunken ships. Later on in the spring, we uh, went into dry dock for three or four or five days and were, were given a, uh, an underwater sound apparatus 
uh, was put on board, put on the ship, but we never did have any training with that, and so we weren't much better off with the underwater sound mechanism than we were to start with. As time went on, uh, other things began to pick up. The uh, ships began to uh, be in convoys, uh, made up in convoys, and then we became escorts for the convoys, and we were doing a little more useful anti-submarine activity. And as time went on, why well, a great deal more was done uh, to combat the submarines, and uh, uh, we had to begin to get air power uh, in areas where it could be reach, reach for us, for this, uh, the Caribbean, other implements, other uh, armament types came into being, which were helpful in combating submarines. Of course, a great deal increased intelligence about submarines came into being, and we were able to realize more and more about what was going on. So by the end of 19, probably the end of 1943, or the later, latter part of 1943, the submarine menace in the Caribbean was diminishing a great deal. And by 19, early 1944, we just had no submarines. But of course, I wasn't even on the destroyer at that time because I stayed on the destroyer exactly one year to the day and then went into submarines myself, which was in about September of 1942 when I left the Barry and went to New London for submarine training and ultimately to submarines.